Have you ever wondered when exactly you should be changing the tires on your mountain bike and maybe what tires you should go with? Well, today we're gonna try to help you with that conundrum. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you're watching another great episode of Toolbox Topic. I'm joined once again by my co-host Brandon Van Leeuwen. Brandon, how the hell are you? I'm doing 08. Nice. You enjoy the va vacation? Yeah, a nice little vacation. Yeah, it's good yeah. to get away. That's awesome. <laughs> he loves Santa Fe. I've never been. I'd like to go. It's you know? nice. If you're from Santa Fe, it's a lovely place. It's a lovely place. I, care, I said it's a civilized place. Civilized place. But he also <laughs> said you can only look at so many friggin' pieces of pottery and, and <laughs> Indian blankets. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, there's and, a lot of that there. Yeah. But it's but okay. It's yeah. part of the charm. Well, it's, it's good to get out of town. Some great so. meals, though. Yeah. Some damn good steaks in Santa Fe. Ooh, man, you had me at friggin' <laughs> charred animal flesh, dude. That's great. So... <laughs> Oh, man, all right, well, again, not to get off topic, but once again, it's we Toolbox did. Topic, we did. And once again, we're here at Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona, because it's where the cool kids hang out, yeah? And me. And as we alluded to in the introduction, we are gonna go over kind of when to decide uh, to replace your tires, what tires you might want to go with. Now, for those watching, obviously get out Arizona, we're in Arizona, there's no, mm -hmm. no trickery there. <laughs> The tires that I choose to ride with for here in the Phoenix metropolitan area, the regional parks up north and everything like that, very different than if you live in the Pacific Northwest or the Midwest mm -hmm. or back east. Different areas are gonna dictate the tire that you choose to your preference. So we would both agree, consult your local, local bike shop. You know, Absolutely. ask questions, see what works. And there's so many different brands to go with and we'll talk more about that. I prefer the Maxxis tires. They have not let me down over the last several years. I typically run Ardents, um, but now with doing a 2.6 up front, which we'll talk about, and a 2.4 in back, I'm gonna be doing an Arden and a, um, what was the other one that we chose? Recon? Recon. Recon. Up front, so. I and, reckon. Yep, I reckon. Um, and Brandon will talk a little bit more about that. So, quick update, <clears throat> the SRAM transmission, beautiful. Good, oh, I'm glad you like it. Absolutely amazing, so I have, I have no thing. And I'll be getting my cleaning kit today. Obi-Wan, <laughs> that's for you, buddy. I know, shocked and amazed, but I will be making that purchase today. So, all right, enough jibber-jabber. People are already bitching and complaining. I can feel it in the comments, and they haven't even started, Brandon. Let's talk about picking a tire first and when you feel it's time to change. What are some signs to look for on your tire that indicate? Obviously all the friggin' cactus pinholes, you can see the seam yeah. oozing out. But that's not a big deal on this one. Yeah, you have all those wet spots kind of yeah. around there, but I don't think that's a big deal. But these are worn though, deal. it's not just they're, those. They're getting worn. Yeah. So um, I guess one of the things that is a true indicator when I tell people that it's an absolutely time to do it, you have a little bit of siping on the top of your knobs. When that siping, those little divots go away, like on this one right here, it's pretty much time to, yeah, to get new ones. Yeah, they're all gone. Um, so that, to me, that that is my wear indicator that it's time to get them. And I got some spots where chunks are actually missing yeah. out here yeah. too, because I ride pretty hard. And you could go a little longer, um, for sure. Like, just background, like, my dad grew up in less favorable circumstances than I did, thanks to him. Right. <laughs> and I would always throw my tires away, and he, he would take them out of the trash. Just like, he'd come, there's plenty of tread on these left. <laughs> Why are you throwing these away? <laughs> they just don't understand. I mean, it's, it, it's one of those things. You, know, right. you can feel it when you're on the trail. Mm -hmm. You're losing traction. You can feel that they're less grippy, that they, that they don't have that, those hard edges that right. they used to have. So it's nice to have... I always say there's nothing that feels better than fresh rubber. True. So, um, you know, you can leave it up your, you can leave it up to a feel or visually look at the, the when that siping is going away on the on those top treads or the center treads. To me, that's that's not negotiable at that point for good performance off road. Right. And Brandon's right. I could probably eke out, you know, maybe another hundred miles, two hundred miles on these. Um, but I got the mountain biking festival coming up. I don't necessarily want to be stranded. No, um, and although, it'd be nice to have fresh rubber for fresh, that yep. for that for that uh, trip. Yep, being up in Sedona it for just a week's good. time. If you have the means, I highly recommend, I highly it. recommend it. It's so choice. <laughs> so we've used that movie reference before, guys. So no, there is no bonus <laughs> points for naming that. Yeah, it is always appropriate. <laughs> so um, 
So let's talk about the different types of tires we could choose. Now, yeah. Brandon, we only pulled the ones that I'm going to be using, and that's the Maxxis Recons and the Ardents in the rear. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk Very about popular why. popular for our area, yes. especially the Ardent. I'd say we probably sell more Ardents here than anything else. In the Bontrager, probably the XR4, we sell quite we sell quite a bit because they're perfect for our conditions. Yep. And when we're talking about that, if you have trouble knowing what to get, there's always a description on the back of these guys. Yes. I was just making sure that Maxxis did that because I know Bontrager. Bontrager does, right? Because you know I ride Bontrager tires mm -hmm. mostly. Um, but if you look on here, we're choosing the right tire. There's these little. Maybe we can get a closer look at it um, with the other camera. But this is perfect for our conditions. We have hard pack, loose over hard, medium to loose. We're out of the mud, right? And we're out of um, you know out of the wet and mud conditions. Yeah, so, it's definitely not Arizona. So look at the back of the packaging. Right. That is going to help you make your decisions. And also, if you're in a bike shop in your area, they're probably going to have already tires that are good for your conditions exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah, you wouldn't stock a tire for the desert if you right. were at a bike shop in Portland. Right. Right. You know. But we do, like, for instance, we do sell tires here that I would never recommend for around here. But some guys want to go ride Leadville. You know, they want fresh tires for Leadville. They're going to go to Utah and do Slick Rock. They want tires for that. So right. we do carry tires to, that are, aren't generally for our area. But, you know, not still, not, still not out of the question for people that, that ride around here. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> pros, cons. 2.4 in the rear, 2.6 up front. People might be confused mm -hmm. on why that would be um, beneficial or why you would even choose to do that. Right. Um, well, I always tell people, run the biggest tire that you can fit in your bike. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you have a little bit more clearance in the front on that uh, on your uh, fork than you do in the back because you are limited by your stays. Right. You probably could run a wider tire here, 2.5, 2.6, but what's going to happen then is if you are in a wet condition or muddy condition, you're going to start building up mud there. It's gonna, yeah, if you suck up a rock, you're going to maybe do some damage to your, to your carbon if that rock gets shot through. Lord forbid <laughs> I chip the paint on my mountain <laughs> know, bike. Right. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> And always on the front. I mean, if we can fit, you can even fit it wider than a 2.6. Yeah. Same problems are going to arise, but we always like to have the biggest tire in front because that's where all your turning authority is going to be. Right. Um, it just feels good to have a ton of traction in the front. Yep. Okay. So, and the bigger tire, the type of bigger tire will do that. But you can experiment. You can do what you want. Do what feels Absolutely. good. Absolutely. And chime in down below if that's something that you do. You run a bigger tire up front than you do in the rear. Um, you know, let us know down below maybe how that came to be, if it's something you've always done or if, if someone recommended that to you mm -hmm. and that's how, how that's working out for you. So um, anything else? I used stand sealant in case you guys were wondering, but is there anything else before we actually get started? And this is gonna be kind of a clinic, guys. You know, again, here's the tires and there's different, you know, Brandon's Bontrager. I just, I just, it's not that they're a bad tire. It's just what I don't use, but there's- I will say the Maxxis tends to have a, th uh, they have more options in protection. You can get the double down, which is a very strong casing, which is great for the rocks around here, sidewall protection and right. all that. Um, Bontrager doesn't quite offer that. So they have a lot more options in protection, I'll say. Yeah. It's a tougher tire. Yeah. And then, you know, different brands are going to offer, again, for different conditions and stuff like that. Pros and cons for everything. Yep. Um, and then as far as sealant goes, I use Stans. Brandon uses use Bontrager. the Bontrager stuff. You know, again, six or one half dozen, my friends. I, as long as it stops the leak for you, that's fine. Right. It, it, and it's important, you know, as long as you're keeping up with it as well. Yep. It's not so much what you use just make sure you're you're using something make sure using there's the something appropriate amount there. there's something yeah. in there and coming in here now we're still in march it's peak riding season it's beautiful um but here in crap two and a half three months it's gonna go fast it's gonna go it's gonna mm -hmm. get really hot and it's gonna be critical for you to check especially here in the in the southwest area in the desert you know once a month um check that sealant because you don't want to be on a ride and you forgot to check that mm -hmm. and then your leak won't pair, and then you're you're pushing your bike back to the vehicle. Yeah. That's I've been, no fun. I've been quite surprised with how quickly it goes in the summertime. Yeah. Using a full Bontrager one, which I think is four ounces, um, and then maybe a month, a month and a half later, I'm putting a lot of air in there, and it's like, what the hell? Now look in there, it's gone. Yeah. So. So you want to stay on top of that? All right. Should we friggin' go ahead and swap these right. out and do a little transition? And yeah. We'll do uh, we'll do one of these guys um, and just kind of show you what I'm looking for, um, as far as. Uh, while we have it apart. While we have it apart, and Brandon can kind of point out some of the things that we talked about so you get a better camera angle and everything like that. So, okay, cool. All right, let me get my, my glasses on so I could see. Brandon, why don't you give us a transition? Three, two, one. Yeah. All right, 
So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll do the back tire because again, this is gonna be, it's always a more complicated one. Um, but it's important to note hey, if you have a Trek bike that this little guy is actually a removable lever for the front as well. A lot of people don't know this. So this can be removed from the back and then used as a, a tool for the front. So Which it's is pretty a handy. Lithium. Yep, a lot, I, I still, people are shocked that, to know that that is, um, is what that's for. Yeah. So just while we got you here, we'll do that. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do, as always, we're gonna shift you down into the high gear here using your new transmission. Sounds good. So nice. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, say what you will about me, ladies and gentlemen, bougie, <laughs> friggin' whatever. <laughs> I don't care, but <laughs> the trans transmission no, is the bee's knees. And don't forget also, if you have SRAM, you do have this little helper here, that little yep. lock locking button. That'll take all the pressure off of the, your, uh, your chain so it's easier to take off. Yep. It'll get all your derailleur out of the way. Again, that's forgot or not mentioned a lot of times and people don't know that that's a feature. I'll put your through axle back here. So, you know, obviously this, are, this is what we're talking about here. We're losing, we're losing those, that tread right. um, in between your, you know, you got chunks taken out, you have a lot of wet spots in here. It, it's a good time to do it. You're definitely, lose, you definitely don't have the multiple, or what should I say, the best <laughs> performance out of this tire. I understand no. this. So uh, first thing I'll do, um, I wanna know how the air is coming out of here. That one's really clogged. slow. I could tell you right now. So that one's one of clogged. the things that we do is we um, we'll either change this thing out while we're here, or we'll clean this one out. We'll see you when we get in there. Yeah. But for now, to make things go faster, I'm just going to remove the core. And the core doesn't look too bad. It might be all I don't know. Typically, what you'll see is that there's a bunch of gunk and residue and these little seals right here, and you can take them out. You don't have that, so. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll just replace them. We'll see what your cores look like. Yeah, and for you guys wondering, you know, Brandon charges me extra for this stuff, so don't think <laughs> you guys, some of you are like, oh, are you sponsored by Trek and everything? No, I'm not sponsored by Trek. <laughs> Friggin', they charge me asshole tax, <laughs> and you know, that's the way it works. Anybody who's been watching for the last couple of years knows why I get charged for it. Brandon's had to put up with me for a long time, guys. <laughs> So it's all right. So this one is coming off the beat are relatively easy. Sometimes they do not. Sometimes they take some cursing and screaming. Right. Um, sometimes you'll see back here, if we really can't get it with uh, hand strength, I just might lay this guy down and very gently making sure not to get it on the wheel. Just try to pull the beat off that way. Okay. But being very careful, of course, and gentle as possible. But sometimes Genteel. we need to do that. Sometimes we have to use the stand here and we'll actually clamp the stand and then and pull it off that way. Okay. I'm just telling you, sometimes it can be a pain in the ass. Yeah, and sometimes so. you guys can hit like, subscribe, and the bell notification sometimes. icon. That it helps out the channel, <laughs> helps out the video, and it's free, it doesn't cost you a thing, guys. And we certainly appreciate the support. So now, things will get messy. <laughs> things will get messy. This will get messy. Uh, to make things easier, we're gonna make sure we're separated on both sides because it'll give you the most room to work. And a little little trick that I do, this one's gonna be tight, I can tell. So something I do is I'll kind of sit on it and use my body weight to pull it down. Okay. And that'll just give you a start. And you can see in there right now, looks like we, <laughs> looks like a, Looks like you hoo inside here. Right. So we have used Bond Traeger sealant. The blue stuff is Bond Traeger. Right. And that might be just a combination of some... Bond Traeger and stands. And stands, perhaps. Yeah. So we'll start fresh with stands, because that that's what you want. Um, well, I put stands in at home from the last time, too. Okay. So that's probably why, because I know it was running. Got it. It was running thin, because it had been a couple months, a couple, two, three months. Okay. And seriously, guys, there's there's not a time that I don't get off the trail where there's new wet spots on the tire, because I'm picking up all kinds of sure. cactus and spikes. In the desert, it wants to stab you or eat you, one of the two. Um, I don't know the, I don't really know generally what the, if there's a problem with 
mixing sealants or not. I okay. haven't heard anything here or there. I don't like mixing them. Obviously, this is just yeah. this just happened in this case. Um, I suppose it's better than nothing mixing them, but I just don't know if it's bad or not. Well, could be so, worse. You could cross the streams. <laughs> so this is disgusting. This is. <laughs> And I have a rag ready here. So at this point, I'm gonna go through here and just, you have the Bontrager rim strip in here, which is one of the, my favorite things that Trek has come up with. Right. Um, but if you were to be running tape at this point, this is a great time to clean off the tape and then check the condition of it. If there's any folds in your tape, if there's any damage in your tape, go ahead and take this time now to clean it up and put new tape in there. Um, but luckily we don't have to because this Bontrager stuff is super good. But still, again, since we're gonna be putting stands in there, I'm gonna just try to clean this out. Uh, give it a couple of once overs. And then I'm also doing my best, trying my best not to get any of that sealant onto the rotor while I'm working with it right. as well. I'm always tipping it off to that side so that I don't get it. If you do get some on your rotor, just get some alcohol right away and get it, um, get it cleaned up as quickly as possible. You should yeah. be all right. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's look at your valve here. Um, what I'm gonna do is, yeah, you can see we're kind of clogged up there and it's also kicked off a little bit. So. The Bontrager one should be just a little bit off. There's a um, there's a corresponding shape with the valve that goes onto that rim strip. And this one's on really tight. Ideally, what you want to do is when you install these is just have it hand tight so that you can always remove it on the trail should you right. find a need to put a tube in there. So I'm straightening it out corresponding with that. You, it's kind of mucky, so you can't really see around the outside. But if this was brand new, you would see that it fits nicer when it's parallel to it. Yeah. So that's there. I have it hand tight now, which should be just fine. And then what I'm gonna do is point this away from your camera and just give it a couple shots to kind of clean it out. RC Blues! <laughs> Do that, and I might have. Uh, what is it? Was it Industry Nine? Industry Nine just pokey came pokey. out with a new set of uh, valves that were Schrader and Presta. They're pretty hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought about you know saying, hey Brandon, let's put some Industry Nine valves on there, but Brandon liked to poo poos on a lot of the stuff. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> friggin' that goddamn Kush core. <laughs> yeah, I do hate that. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> um, so this is looking good. I can see through there now. We got it blown out. Um, I use my little spokey pokey to run through there. It's looking good. You do the spokey pokey and you turn yourself <laughs> around. <laughs> what do I do with your valve core? Uh, right there. Hey, thanks. Yep. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reinstall the valve core and give it a shot make sure it's feeling a little better. Here's my valve core tool. Mm-hmm. Now you guys might be wondering, See, Thomas, yeah, again, why don't you do this yourself? And I'm, you know, because then it wouldn't be making a very interesting video, guys. Because we know Brand is a talent. It's still a little slow. So it's still a little bit slow. <clears throat> if it's a, if it's okay with you, Thomas, let's put a new valve cover in there. Yeah. Those seals just might be worn out or something. Oh, in case you guys are wondering, when I retire from the camera shop here, I'm gonna come to work for Brandon part time one you day think a week. So, huh? Yep. <laughs> one day a week, every Monday. <laughs> For again, we'll film Monday mornings and I'll just stay and work for the rest of the day. And again, it'll be awesome. So that doesn't have that wheeze anymore, yeah. I guess. So that feels, that sounds a little bit better to me. That does sound a lot better. So cool. So we're ready to do your tire. Uh, this is the rear tire. So in the back, we're gonna be putting on a Ardent. It's a 2.4. And again, this is, <clears throat> So this is very popular for this area, but we also, if you look yeah, at you the, see. the chart here, the actually the recon is more over to the um, favorable side for us, uh, the hard pack, loose over. Um, this goes medium loose, and then even the wet side here. But people love it, so. I know I, I do, works. they Good. haven't failed me. Can't argue, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
or just a plethora of pop culture <laughs> references here. So when you're doing this, make sure also if you're tubeless, you're buying a tubeless ready tire because you can get foldable ones that are not tubeless. And while I'm doing this, just know that tubeless is a system. That system is kind of like a Ziploc bag. <laughs> so the, the bead on the tire itself is the exact opposite shape of the bead on the, on the rim. So that it sits like a Ziploc bag. So you have a, the tightest seal. And that's, that's why it has to be tubeless ready. Um, pro tip, always line up your logo, whichever logo you like best with your valve. I like the fact that Brandon pays attention to little details. Little things. Oh. There's a couple ways you can do it. So I'm starting from the inside here, so that gives me the opportunity to push it over into the wheel. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how tight this one gets. Our and sometimes are a little more challenging could be a little sassy because they are floppy in some respect but then very tight as well <laughs> so i'm gonna it's getting kind of tight there so i'm gonna use a little bit of lever very gently now if you have to really reef on these guys you can do damage on them um, so it's important just to take them just very Take them by the bit. Right. Yeah, there's not a whole lot, I would say, so in, one side. in biking that something has to be like legitimately like straight up forced. Everything should fit together the way it's it meant should. to fit together. Yep. Every once in a while you have to put some elbow into it. Yep. So but. that wasn't too bad. You're gonna, you know, if you really have to reef on it or use something like What's this thing? We've ac accidentally killed bikes or tires using the, the Cush Core butt plug, which is this guy right here. And that's it at the, the is tool. Is that the technical name it, for it? The Cush Core butt plug? It is. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we try to stay away from this as all possible because this has actually ruined in some times the, um, the bead of the tire. So. Gotcha. Um, Thanks, Cush Core. Next side. We're going to start with moving the tire all the way to the inside because that inner channel is going to give us more space mm -hmm. as we put the second side in there. Starting away from the valve stem, just like any other time. Start working this on. And then pinching it towards the inside. And then it pops off. Now, you could remove the valve core again and pour your stands in there through the valve core. That's fine, but I'm already opened up here. So I'm just gonna pour it directly yeah, in there. Yeah, Brandon dumps it in. Now guys, I if I tried in. doing this, I would make a huge mess. <laughs> so I will give Brandon credit for having the skill and ability <laughs> well, to freaking do this. And if anybody from Stans is watching, you know how many times a day I do this? How come the seals don't just come <laughs> off? If anybody from Stan is Preach watching, it, Brandon. please Preach just it. find a way to make this easier to take off. Every time I got to do this. Uh, in this, this instance, I don't feel like, what is this, two ounces, three ounces, yeah. two ounces? I don't feel like this is enough. No, we always use big tire. Yeah. So I'm putting two in there. Um, and truly, if it's my bike, I get the big bottle of Bontrager sealant, like this guy right here. Yeah, he just dumps I it in there. <laughs> That's good. That's what I do. <laughs> you come for the knowledge and you stay for the comedy, my friends. I definitely am of the school of thought that more sealant is not a bad thing. Nope. Especially around here. So if there's uh, going to be four ounces in there now. <clears throat> Oof. Oh, that could have been Talk bad. about your all-time backfires. Yeah. Now, I will say I've never seen Brandon screw this one up, but <laughs> if he does and he catch it on video, that's going to be something. All right. Looks like I might save my reputation. And it's getting tight again. Uh, but again, pinching it to the inside is going to help a little bit. Give me some room. And it also doesn't help that my fingers are all slippery 
from messing with the sealant. Right. All right, we're on there. Uh, so we've cleaned out the valve core, so we should get uh, some nice airflow through here and it should seat up real nice. Hopefully we'll get some nice good pops for the camera. Yeah. Making sure also that when, that the bead is on both sides of the valve here yeah. so we get all the air in there. All right, let's see what happens. All right. If you're having trouble seating this up, a lot of, sometimes it could happen, it could be the, the that the tape is bad and you have to retape. But, all right. It's going good, easy. A uh, couple more pops. Uh, hey, That's a good one. Hey. That's a good one. So 60 PSI is the max on these. Obviously you're not gonna ride these at 60 PSI off-road. Right. Uh, but for the, a new setup like this, I am gonna start you off around 30, 35 pounds because you might lose a little bit as it's, as it's kind of figuring itself out and seeding up. And now the best thing to do for something like this would be to actually go take it for a little ride. The more the stuff is spinning around inside there, the better. And um, yeah, that's how you do that. All right. That's the first one. Did you have valve caps on here? Nope. Okay, good. Yes, I don't think I did. So all that went very smooth and we're gonna just repeat that for the front. And I don't know if we want to see no, that No, we don't not. have to, so but we'll, we'll go ahead and remount that tire and then go ahead and transition back to the regular camera. Yeah, for sure. So guys, and we've done a couple shorts on uh, how to remount your tire. Um, pretty easy peasy. What? Put your tire on backwards. Did you put the tire on backwards? Yeah. <laughs> so rookie mistake. Oh, for a, for a guy that's been doing this a long time, I put his tire on backwards. It's a directional it's tread probably, and we didn't talk about the, that. Uh, the pressure of being on camera. So. <laughs> Learn from me. Okay. All right. We'll get so, this done. We'll get it done. So what we'll do. God, God damn it. man. I hate hey, that. we're human. All right. So Brandon, transition us out, and then we'll do the closing, and then let you do what you need to do. Yeah. Disappointment. Mm -hmm. All right. So <laughs> Brandon's learned a lesson, and so it happens to all of us. I do rookie mistakes. Brandon does it every <laughs> once in a while. We are not above it, and we leave those things in camera so you guys can see it. Um, of course, you can comment down below and harass us a little bit. We expect a little that bit of all in fun. Um, but these are things that do happen, so we want to make sure if we're using a directional tread that that tread is facing the right way. As you can see, we did not put the tire back on or the wheel back on. It's right there. And these are obvious because the arrows are kind of pointing, <laughs> pointing the way it's supposed to go. But if it's not go. quite as obvious, especially on road tires, there usually is a directional arrow on them right. that'll show you which way to put them. And sometimes we got to take a look because it's it's hard to see. But this one is, is blatant and, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I feel much shame. No, nope, it happens, guys. So what are you going to do? But, and as a whole, there's how the process would go. <laughs> as far as picking a tire, now we know how to pick a tire. Um, as far as what to look for when your tire is worn, when it's time to replace it. Yep. Um, and then at the end of the day, consult your like old bike shop, all right? On a tire that's going to work for your area, just don't let just them, don't put, have it them put it on. Just don't have them put it on for you. <laughs> Oh, oh man, oh, it's all right though, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. okay, these things happen. So, <laughs> all right, my friends, seriously, there you go. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, bell notification icon. It helps out the video, helps out the channel, the trifecta we love so much. There's links down below to Trek Bicycle Stores West Phoenix of Goodyear, Arizona. Um, follow the link. If you have any questions about today's video, you know you can ask down in the comments. I answer all the comments. <laughs> Um, or reply to all the comments, or you can give Brandon one of his guys a call. They'd be more than happy to help you. Um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the devil's work of social media, but it's necessary to get the word out about Get Out Arizona. And the other links down below are affiliate links. If you make a qualifying purchase, we receive a small commission. You don't get charged anything extra, and it helps us with gas money, park passes, and um, coffee, coffee money. money. Yep, the other trifecta we love so much around <laughs> here. And it's just a good thing. So on that note, my friends, what do we say? Other than it happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards on that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Nothing. I'm already getting started. <laughs> Get out of Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, we'll see you next week. Layers. <laughs>